Hey everybody, so I am going to be talking about my opinions about kind of Dolly 3, what it's good at, what it's bad at, and kind of why, uh, what you should and should not kind of kind of use it for, right? So uh, pretty much every picture of art uh, that's in this presentation is from Dolly 3. So I guess, yeah, as a high level, first about myself, so I run a happy hour that's every Monday. Uh, it's kind of like in the, in the evenings near kind of the Twitter office at a bar, uh, it's basically kind of like a networking event where people just talk about AI art, their, their startups, uh, and, and all of that jazz. Uh, definitely come by sometime every Monday. It's on Meetup. Now, let me, let me get into it. So kind of a high-level overview of, I would say, uh, we'll call this, these like the technical details of kind of what Dolly is uh, and kind of what, what its features are. So I guess first is a high-level. Dolly 3 is an AI art kind of feature of chat GDP. Right. And so what that means is that you can make images pretty much only in the chat GTP uh, interface. So normally when you, you might be asking it questions, but you could also just say, make me an image of a giraffe and you can do it kind of in their their interface. Uh, you can't, I guess they have an API as well, um, but mostly I think most people are going to be using it through the kind of GTP interface. So com comparisons to kind of other AI art uh, kind of generators like the the open source ones. This one takes about kind of thirty seconds to kind of make an image, which is kind of on the the higher side of uh, kind of kind of time to create images. Um, and then I would say uh, we'll be showing some photos later, but I would say that the quality is about as good as Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion XL, uh, with the exclusion of kind of photorealism, which I think kind of other things are are better at, and we'll kind of get into that why. Um, and the main things to know about that are it uh, it's it's effectively kind of like just a chat bot. And so it doesn't have a lot of the uh, other features you might expect from a lot of kind of the open source kind of kind of tools and frameworks. So that's kind of a high level detail of it. Um, I mean, it's it's also a bit expensive, I would say. So you can only access it by having like a chat GDP kind of plus $20 a month membership and you're Ray limited to like 40 images every three hours. Uh, or it's like 10 cents in a which, which I think is a bit on the high side. And then noticeable missing features, I would say, uh, before we get into kind of what you should use it for. Um, so this is this image is actually of uh, the old Dolly 2 editor, which used to have things like impainting, um, where you could kind of delete certain sections of kind of like the, the image and regenerate just that part. Uh, for Dolly 3, it it pretty much has almost, almost none of that. <laughs> so... Uh, you couldn't uh, do impainting, you couldn't fine tune, you couldn't kind of create embeddings, you couldn't create kind of control net, uh, things that I think are, are pretty standard in, in a lot of the open source things. It's basically just usable, just kind of like how Midjourney is, just, just kind of usable through their chatbot. Um, so I guess here's the, here's the question. Why, why would you use it? Uh, why would you use Dolly 3 if it doesn't have kind of access to a lot of these, these open source features? I would say the, the biggest reason why you use Dolly is it effectively solves a lot of the prompt engineering kind of problem. So I'm sure people have seen uh, prompts like this, where you say something like robot girl in blue colors in the style of hyper realistic environment, 32k Hector uh, Gumard style, close up mechanical design. It's always become like a whole career to kind of be a, a prompt engineer of kind of like typing in magic words as if you're doing alchemy into this kind of like black box and really doing a lot of this guess and check and not really kind of knowing what kind of like the props do. You can still do that with Dolly 3, but you can also just tell it, I want an image of a robot girl and it, and it will just give you a good image of that or it will ask you questions. So, so the, the point of this is I think the reason why you use Dolly 3 is you should not be treating this like mid journey. You should not be treating this like stable diffusion. You should be treating this like you're talking to a person, like you're talking to an artist. Like, oh, I want to get, uh, I guess here's a, here, here's an example of kind of like the robot example I gave. Uh, and so instead of typing that crazy prompt, I just typed in, make me a picture of an awesome robot girl. Um, and that's kind of the first image kind of on the left side is, is, is what it did. 
Um, and then kind of another thing to think about is with a chatbot, you can then use those previous images as kind of like a half input into your new one. So uh, the reason why you do this is you can easily iterate on your previous images. Uh, and you can iterate it in kind of very general abstract ways. So the two other images after this were me saying, make the previous picture more awesome. And then it just made the image more awesome, um, w which is <laughs> a lot different th than how other um, things might go. So, so, so the way that you would do this normally with uh, prompt engineering is you might say, I want an image that is awesome level 1000. But what is the difference at, between something that is awesome level 1000 versus awesome level a million, right? Uh, th there's not really a way to prompt engineer that too well. Uh, th so, I mean, there's some boundings of it. You could say like, oh, imagine you have a an awesome level between one and 10 and you could say awesome level seven and that and that might improve it. But eventually you, you reach a limit. Where, whereas with kind of this this uh, Dolly 3, you can even do something like make it more detailed. Here's another example, or you can get kind of different angles. So this is an example of me just telling it to make the robot girl kind of more detailed, and it just kind of became more detailed. Um, so that that's kind of like the, the high level best use case for it. Um, oh, so so another cool thing that should be known about Dolly 3 is is, uh, is, is text. It, it is better that then there's not a lot of image models that kind of do text and see so you can this is a, this is an example of a picture i did where it said make me a picture of a field of wheat that is afraid with a tractor in the background the wheat is saying wheat better get out of here and if you look at kind of this example you you will notice that the, the letters do look cool but uh, the the text works about 30 percent of the time i would say uh it is a is a rough estimate and so that was kind of just the first picture that it created it uh, so just just added Dolly three. So I thought thought I'd kind of like show that off to see kind of the real results. Uh, but it does it does look look cool. And if you just generate it like three or four times, it's kind of gonna get, gonna get the right kind of text. Um, so that is the text of it. Um, okay. Another major caveat about Dolly three is that compared to other art generators, th the filters are quite strict. So anything to do with which you could be good or bad in kind of your opinion so anything to do with like copyright the material the chat bot it, it's not even like the model will do it. it it's like the the chat bot will kind of stop you from doing it so the the picture i have on the left was i, I told it to make me a picture of superman uh and you will notice that is not superman uh it, but i mean it's like it, it's it's a superhero in a red cloak so it it, it doesn't do that stuff it will also uh Okay, so get to my point about, um, I mentioned that one of the quality issues of Dolly 3 is that it doesn't work super well with photorealism. I think that's because of the filters. So if you give it an image of a person, if you say, I want you to, to take this image uh, and put a hat on this person, it will not do that. It'll say this breaks our uh, kind of terms of service re restrictions to do kind of anything that's like photorealistic. I think that they're trying to stop like deep fakes. Um, or even anything like, like slightly sexual or, or hitting any, whereas like a lot of the mid journey stuff does, does do it. So the, the filters are, are quite strict, I think, and especially for copyright, uh, and photo reels on, um, like here's an example. This is like a, uh, just a prompt I found of on, on mid journey, which was like, uh, a photo of a Greek goddess. Uh, it didn't say it, in the prompt, it doesn't actually say anything sexual. It says just. I guess it's this photo of a beautiful Greek goddess, uh, fair-skinned, detailed expression. But even that was kind of like against the the Chad DB rules. Uh, so that is something to be aware of. Um, okay, so another feature that uh, Dolly has is because it's in the OpenAI ecosystem, it has access to all of the open AI chatbot tools, one of those, which is GTP vision. So you can actually upload an image to Dolly 3 and you, you can like say, oh, okay. The example I gave is turn myself into an anime picture. Um, it, it's it's a, a bit of a poor man's, I think, um, image to image, if people know that work uh, in, in other uh, services, you can upload an image and 
uh, change it slightly. But this one kind of uh, with vision, it finds keywords. So it can, um, it'll find like, okay, what is, what is the color of the clothes people are wearing? What is their hair color? Uh, what, what do they have a hoodie on? And then it will mostly be able to create like anime pictures of you. So this example is uh, I gave it a picture of me and I told it to create an anime version. And then I took the anime picture and I said, create a photo realistic version of that, that anime picture, if that makes sense. And that's kind of what was the fi final result at the end. Um, so uh, another thing to think about uh, for the OpenAI ecosystem is you can actually, uh, there's like a new GTP store where you can share kind of uh, chat bots and you could actually, and this chat, chat GTP store can uh, include prompts that allow you to kind of like create images. So actually I made one which was, uh, turning yourself into kind of like an anime character. And the reason I guess why you would do that is you can kind of share prompts a lot better than, uh, and then it like just kind of runs it in kind of like that, that bot star. Um, and then I'm going to end this, to end this off with kind of an example of kind of a, a t cool Twitter, <laughs> uh, Twitter, uh, trend that people found, which was, uh, uh, really takes advantage of kind of the chat bot features of this. And this was making a pizza more delicious. So it started off as a regular cheese pizza and somebody progressively asked it to make it more delicious. Uh, so it starts off fairly normal. Maybe the one on the right might be edible. And then it goes even more interesting where <laughs> uh, it, it, it eventually turns into anthropomorphic pineapples eat, eating pizza. And then it, and uh, if you make this even more delicious than that, it turns into a galaxy eating <laughs> uh, pineapple. Um, whereas, uh, this really isn't something, for example, that you could like just do in, in mid journey. I, I, I guess you could make a prompt that says galaxy eating pineapple, but you couldn't just say, make my previous image more delicious and then eventually get to a galaxy eating pineapple. <laughs> um, and then, uh, I guess conclusions, I guess I, I would say why you would do this. Um, I think it's a... I think you would use this over kind of mid journey. So uh, as even though you don't have kind of all these uh, kind of choices or or ways of exactly can kind of controlling the image, at least it's not just like a discord bot. Um, and it really helps on kind of prompt engineering, whereas uh, so you don't have to just spend hours and hours figuring out exactly what these kind of magic keywords do. Um, and it works pretty well with the open AI ecosystem do. So that is kind of like my high level thoughts on kind of using this for a couple couple weeks. Uh, did anybody else have any other uh, questions or opinions, I would say, about kind of your personal experience with, with Dolly 3, if anybody's tried it? There are three major players in, in the space right now. So there, there's Mid Journey, which is kind of a Discord bot where you can get very pretty anime pictures of people. Uh, there's Dolly 3, which I just showed off. And the other open source alternative is uh, called Stable Diffusion. And it is what runs it. It's basically the, there's an open source model where people can kind of make the images on their home PC. And the reason why you do this is because it has a diversity of very powerful tools that are created kind of by the open source community that allow you to, uh, it, it's a lot more feature complete. So features like like training your own model on your face so you can make images of yourself. Uh, things like making people in certain poses or replacing certain parts of an image by erasing certain parts of it. Uh, it's like a whole open source kind of ecosystem with, with a, kind of a lot of features. So uh, a lot more feature complete, but it has a little bit lower quality um, and it's it's a harder to use kind of the, these tools. <music> You know, I could do a whole talk on just that. Um, I, I am a little bit surprised at how far behind I think Midjourney has gotten on their their interface. So um, they they don't have a web app. They've been around for like a year and a half, and they haven't made a web app. They haven't made a mobile app. Uh, they're still just you have to download Discord and and chat in Discord <laughs> uh, to make your images, and all the images are public. I don't think they have an API yet. Um, yeah. But um, I think it works a little bit better with OpenAI because they have like a whole ecosystem. Um, whereas Midjourney is just just images. It's not like your. I, I mean, I, I think Chat TV actually even has like a like a phone app. So yeah. Uh,
you could download the image and yeah. put it in and upload it somewhere else. Um, so, so it doesn't have in painting. So I guess, yeah, that was the, the, the slide I had over here, which was, uh, there used to be like a whole dolly to interface where you could make edits. Um, you can give it commands. So you could say, I mean, I mean like here, that's kind of what I'm doing here is I'm telling it to, to make it cooler. I guess that that's kind of an edit. Um, but yeah, it generates a whole new one on the fly. No, no impeding, no image damage. Yeah. Are they transparent backgrounds? My guess would be probably not, but you could do remove background on it. Um, so you could tell it to give it, give it a blank background, I would say, but I think a blank background is different from transparent, right? Um, well, we'll see. Um, but I mean, you, usually it's, it's good at, at following instructions, but you might have to just, yes, yeah, so you see, it's not a, yeah, it's not, tra it kind of looks transparent, but this is not transparent. So yeah, you, but you could remove, remove background on use a different tool. Couple use cases. Um, I mean, I think the best use case is the viral stuff. So making profile pictures of yourself, uh, making pictures to post on Twitter. Uh, I have heard that the internet uh, art commission market is like completely destroyed right now. So it used to be you could go on Fiverr um, and like pay somebody like a hundred bucks to make an image. Um, I think that that stuff is 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 all AI right now. Um, I mean, people are talking about like, oh, could you make game assets with it? Um, and then now people are doing videos and movies and stuff. Uh, but in in the meantime, because a lot of these images aren't super perfect, um, I would say just viral marketing stuff. Yeah, on Twitter. <laughs> the child of Jesus and who? Mary Magdalene. Mary Mag. Specifically their daughter. Yeah, it's okay. See, <laughs> we're, we're already getting into the the <laughs> the filters. Um it's saying creating an image of a fictional child it, it requires a careful approach. <laughs> it's, it's not it's, Oh wait, actually it is trying. <laughs> oh, it gave a warning. It said like uh okay, so so I I'm making the image. So so what you're talking about is um uh it's called fine tuning or training your own model. Uh, the, I mean, the easiest one I would recommend is uh, Scenario.com. You can just like, uh, I mean, a lot of people run it on their home PCs, but Scenario.com has a way of you just upload a bunch of images and it makes a model. Um, and then you can kind of make new images from that to completely user friendly, all online. Um, yeah, that's what I recommend. You could mimic generic styles i would say um like you you could you could almost certainly do make make something in the style of comic book characters uh -huh. but i also think that they specifically tried to prevent uh making styles of specific artists so so you, you couldn't put somebody's name in you might be able to upload an image and saying make a new image based on what the style of this image is or you might be able to describe it in some way but you but you're the filters are going to get you <laughs> if you if you put somebody's name in there So if you train a model, mm -hmm. sure, yeah, you just you give it whatever data set you want. Um, usually, it's like fifty to one hundred images, um, and that's like the whole point is to mm -hmm. is to train it on images and make more like that style, like like a Van Gogh or or a comic book or mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I mean it. it, it yeah, I would say so. Got a bunch of cute animals. I made a cool spaceship. And I'm telling it to make it cooler. Um, I'd I'd say this is this is a cooler spaceship now, um, and we'll see what it does again. Yeah, <laughs> I think so somebody did that with a uh, make me the most normal image, um, and then they they tried to make it more and more normal. Um, it it started off with like a coffee cup, and then it turned into a piece of paper, and then it turned into a blank white room. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, that, that kind of 
kind of works, I would say. Um, so I guess that's kind of all I had. Uh, so thank, thank you. Thank you.